by two professors, one of whom you may know, Professor Faber, who teaches at Michigan State Law School. And it is from about three years ago at an animal law conference. And uh, the question uh, for the panelists was ethical duties for wildlife. Uh, I felt that the topics that they brought up were uh, of, of importance and use in this, in this setting, here, given that we don't have a whole lot of time. So ethics and law. Uh, when we're considering this topic, wildlife, human animal, human wildlife uh, conflicts, as well as deer calls, um, I think that the concept of the other is useful. Um, this is a philosophical concept, and it's often used when we're discussing animals and our relationship with animals. And it essentially asks the question, who are the others that I personally, or we as a society, choose to care about? Do they include non-human animals? Um, do they include all non-human animals? So that's food for thought. The second thing is to, to conceptualize this and think somewhat outside the box, um, the traditional framework for analyzing questions having to do with wildlife and wildlife conflict is the hunting, conservation, and wildlife management uh, paradigm. Uh, the, the discussion that I referenced um, talks about a rights framework, or perhaps I would prefer calling it the legal interest of animals. It's a less charge um, uh, word than, than rights. So in other words, um, is our legal system capable of recognizing the interests of wildlife? And the answer to that is maybe not so much, um, and at least as it's constituted now or as it's practiced now. And there are a couple of reasons why. First of all, our legal system has a binary or dualistic nature where we look at living creatures and we put them in two boxes, humans in one box and everyone else in the other box. The other thing to consider about our legal system, uh, when you think about it, uh, the ethics or an ethical system is, it talks about best practice. Whereas the law is a set of practices that have been more or less agreed upon, but they set minim minimally acceptable practices. So if you do take a look at the discussion between Professor Faber and Professor Waldo, they go into certain details about how we can use our existing legal system and what modifications there could be to it to uh, increase um, representation of the interests of individual wildlife, wildlife. But that's beyond the scope of today's discussion. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about policy, uh, shifting gears a bit here. And what I would argue is that for the issue at hand, municipal deer calls, community buy-in is particularly crucial in these situations, particularly when you're dealing with lethal management, as deer calls are. It leads to the importance of developing and articulating a coherent